because this has a spring on it, what I'm going to do is loosen it from the top and then let the knuckle down. So right here we have our rear strut. Uh, the strut is attached at the bottom, these two bolts, and then at the top, the strut is attached with these three nuts as well as this nut. This is what the top of the shock is actually attached to. So this will be the different Coney component and these will be the same when we're done. As you can see, bugs like my car. <coughs> Jesus. The damper is trying to expand up, so if I undo this nut, nothing will happen basically. <coughs> Leave this connected at the top, and then I will disconnect all this stuff just like I did in the axle video and drop it all down. Should be pretty easy. Um, the only difference is this will have to come off this time, which I didn't have to do in the axle video. First, we're going to remove this bolt here that's going to let the strut drop down eventually. The spring compression is going to be held in by the suspension down here. So we will remove this and then we will remove these with the jack underneath the knuckle and then I'll let the jack down and that will absorb the spring so that we don't need a spring compressor. It is a 19. So that's off, this is our strut bolt. Grab this breaker bar and 17 here. Break this loose. Awesome. Oh my god, I just did all that out of off camera. All I did while the camera was pointed in the wrong place was I put a 17 mil wrench on this and then on the back I took an impact of the 17 on it and went and took it out. I'm just trying to get that bolt out. This thing not lined up anymore. This arm has like a coupling like this. The bolt went through the middle, right? So now that the bolt is halfway out, it's basically pulled. So with the jack, I'm just trying to get them to line up so the bolt will just come out. There we go. As you can see, that was holding the strut up. I actually need to lift the strut back up so that I can take out these bolts. 19 on this side, 19 on the other side. That's it, it's a 14. You need a five mil Allen wrench to take the sway bar end link off. So that bolt is out now. There we go. All right, the spring is loose, so it's safe now. So, as you can see, you really don't need a spring compressor. I forgot to take this brake line off. These are the OEM springs. I'm going to put them back in because I autocross in street class. And in street class you're not allowed to change your springs. Do this before you take everything off and it won't be such a pain. Oh. This thing is crap. It's completely toasted. Look at that. That is not how a strut should behave. So this is absolutely toast, which I knew based on autocross. I'm going to jack up the lower control arm because with the knuckle down, the space to squeeze the Allen key into the sway bar end link is too small. Just put a 19 on each side. So now letting the jack down, let all the pressure out of the spring. 
Now with one of these out, pull the knuckle down and let the spring out. There we go. Now I should be able to let down the knuckle. There we go, that comes out, grab that second washer. make our way to the front. I went to the store and bought jack stands because this car is going to be on jack stands for a few days. The boot covers that go on top of the strut here in order to protect this piston weren't in stock anywhere nearby so I ordered some and they won't come until Tuesday. Today's Sunday um, so I'm going to disassemble all four struts and get them ready to be put back on but I'm not going to put them back on yet. Never had the front plastics off. Nice. First thing we do is jack up the lower control arm a little bit to um, sort of simulate a more normal position for the suspension. First we're going to remove the strut bolt up top and then we're going to remove the sway bar link down on the lower control arm we're going to remove the connections for these two hoses. The, I think the brake hose and the ABS hose or wire, I guess. Then we're going to unbolt the strut, drop it, and just pull the bolts out. So first things first, we get our 19 mil onto the impact. Or if you hate working on cars, um, you can use a breaker bar. If you work on cars, get an impact, you will not regret it. And just like that, she's out. Use your 10 mil to remove the bolt from the ABS wire. Use your 12 mil to take off this bolt holding on the brake hose. Oh. If you ever get confused when you're upside down and you just want to be sure that you don't break a bolt, grab a ratchet and you can just put it on the nut and see which direction it clicks in. It only takes one time when you're tired and confused to break your sway bar end link. Yeah, um, that's one way to delete your sway bar. Alright, so now that everything is detached from the strut, now we just need to remove the sway bar so that the lower control arm will have more mobility. Here you can see the front sway bar end link. Underneath is a 12 mil facing upward like this. So I'm just going to move my ratchet underneath and start loosening. Oh. There we go. Ooh, that's warm. Wow, holy moly. We're going to leave the tie rod end on, so it should only be the sway bar and these two bolts left. So I'm going to take off the top one and then lower the jack. So you just put it on the nut side and then set your drill to reverse. And boom. So hopefully when we lower this, uh, the strut will drop down with the spring in it and the spring will not have any more compression left in it. So let's drop the jack. See how loose it is. It's still pretty tight. Uh, ooh, the sway bar is still here. Let me turn the wheel and then pull the sway bar out. The jack is still supporting the lower control arm and the bolt is still supporting the strut right here. All right, well, uh, that's how you remove a strut without a spring compressor. This lower ball joint's broken. That sucks. Yeah, I'm glad I just ordered four boots. I recommend you check your struts and then do the same because I actually have to wait until tomorrow for mine to arrive. So this won't be back together today. 
Well, this is pretty much the performance of all the struts I took out. All right, let's clean these and get them ready for paint. reason I'm painting these is because I'm vain. Alright, so now we're going to drain the front left shock. The instructions say to find the center of the shock and punch it. And then to drill a three millimeter hole in the bottom of the shock and then tape over it. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's find the center of our shock. Let me measure it real quick. It's a little bit to the side here. Yeah, that's a better one. All right, so now we are going to get a three millimeter drill bit. Of course, mine are in Yankee units because that's where I live. Let's grab the eighth and see how big that is. Yeah, an eighth is almost exactly three millimeters, so let's put this eighth millimeter drill bit in the chuck. Get everything out of the pan, because it's about to get oil in it. Really hard for it to drill, apparently. Ooh, we heard squishy sounds. And there we go. So at this point, we have this hole. So we will, we're supposed to tape it off. I'm guessing so you don't make a mess. I don't really have the ability to do that. All right, the instructions specify 65 millimeters from the top of this shaft. 65 millimeters uh, is six and a half centimeters. So from here, 65 is down here by this yellow paint mark. That's actually the most out of all of these shocks that are listed. Let's get our blue painter's tape and start taping around the body of the shock here. So first I'm gonna tape around the entire circumference of this thing. Now I'm gonna go back I'm going to grab one more piece of tape. Alright, the second layer of tape didn't really work. 65 is like all the way down here. So, I don't have any kind of vise. Um, this did not stick at all. So, I don't know if you need duct tape or what, but the scotch tape did not do anything. I don't have a hacksaw or a, or a bench vise, so I'm going to try just getting this with a cutoff wheel. Anyone who's done this before probably was like, what are you doing painting these before you do the super messy gross part? And I just, I don't know, I'm stupid. So now we drill a 14 millimeter hole in the bottom. Yep, so half inch. Jesus Christ. There's the hole. It's not very pretty. Uh, so I guess I have to file this or something. I'm not really sure about that. I don't really have any files, so I might have to go buy some files now. Check this out. It's just it's just a housing now. So that sweet, sweet Coney damping can go inside. If you don't have a garage, 
or should keep it working. A truck bed makes the best workbench. How does he know the sound of the UPS truck so well? He knew that was the UPS truck before it even made it to our house. Freaking Shebas, man. All right. Now for the large hole, the large file. That actually went better than I thought and was easier than I thought. So technically this is fully prepped. So I should be able to stick the Kony insert inside now. As you can see, they didn't have school bus yellow, so the struts are actually the wrong yellow. Uh, I just followed the instructions for the other strut. This is, this is the wrong one. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Everything's fine. <laughs> Sorry. I had cheese earlier. What is this? It's, it's like a, it's the world's biggest Allen key. I don't have what I need for this. So I borrowed my dad's 8 mil Allen wrench. And I was able to twist the screw in order to pull the strut insert in. And as you can see, the little uh, extended nubbin things are now inside the old shock body. Um, so now I removed that screw. So now you place that washer concave down and then you put this lock washer thing on top. And then you put this lock washer thing on top. And then you put this lock washer thing on top. And then you put the screw in the middle and tighten it to make sure it's not cross-threaded. And then you can go ahead and tighten this to 40 something foot-pounds of torque, also known as a lot. Ugh, okay. I have now installed a Coney yellow cut strut inside the strut body. So pretty exciting. It's my dad. Hey, working? Play work. Watching your puppies. Not like watching them, just watch them, you know. Like they're laying outside being cute. Today we're adding wood clamps to the mix. Also, I don't have the other tape measure. I have this tape measure, so it should be close enough. I already measured out the bottoms, so all I have to do is measure from the top. So we've already got a Sharpie mark in the middle. Showed you how to do that yesterday, which of course for you was mere minutes ago. mostly drained out. I don't have my phone, so I can't Google it. But I don't know how long 65 millimeters is in Yankees. 30 centimeters is a foot. Okay, so 30 divided by six is five. So a fifth of a foot. A little more than a fifth of a foot. Do I have the thing I cut off yesterday? All right, two and a half inches. Lock your thing at three inches. Place two and a half here. I don't feel like I'm doing this, so I'm gonna cut and then rotate and then measure and then cut and then rotate and then measure and then cut. Oh yeah, measuring. Measuring is important. Amazing. Now that the top is cut off, we can proceed to drilling out the bottom. Woo! That's a lot of torque. 
Gee whiz, you think this is gonna work? Because I don't. I'm gonna try going backwards and see if I can like ream it out a little bit. Woo! Alright, that should work. And make sure to ream that hole out or you're going to sit there filing it for an hour like I did with the other one. That worked way better that time. The camera just died during the most peak moment. As you can see, this last strut, the rear right strut, was the most functional of all the struts and it left <laughs> a lot of spittle in a line. It really exploded. I'm just very, very sad that it didn't get caught on camera. Um, all you missed was me drilling out this hole. Take these all inside and file them down. We're back to bench. Today, I got some hex sockets, so I should be able to torque the inserts into the shock bodies. Alright, now I have to go find my torque wrench. I can't find my torque wrench anywhere. Found it. We need the 8 mil. The bottom of these Coney yellow strut inserts are actually held on by this uh, Allen key or hex key bolt at the bottom. So you're going to need to buy a set of these hex to sockets if you want to actually torque it to the correct spec like you're supposed to. Oh, I did not tighten it enough. Okay. Good enough. Tight as heck with a handheld Allen key is still not 55, 55 pound feet to torque. I'll clamp this down. I'm so paranoid that I set this wrong. I'm gonna switch to two of these clips now. See if that will hold it to this 55 pound feet. Foot pounds, sorry. For those of you who care, it's, it's R cross F, so the radius is a measurement of length, that's why the foot goes first. You legitimately need a vise for this. Or I guess you could do this after you've put it on the car. There we go. That's one. I already cleaned the first one I did. There we go. Look at that. Alright. This is about how well I did on centering the hole. You can see that it's pretty much centered, so let's see if the bolt just goes right in. That would be great. The bottom kits have the same part number, so don't worry about mixing those up. So this bolt should easily turn in. And it turns easily for a few turns and then gets stuck. That actually means that somewhere it's rubbing. So right here, 
you can see that this is actually touching the bolt so I need to clearance this a little bit with the file and then I should try again this should just turn right in Ooh, first try sweet oh no that's not good uh, it's gonna be a whole lot of filing that's not right dude I cut this the wrong amount what the I could have sworn it said 65 millimeters on all four. If, I don't know how much force these apply to the shock body. Uh, hopefully it's not that much compared to this bolt because that's all that's going to be holding it in. I guess this is like the most daunting part to me because now it's reassemble everything. And the first thing we have to do is put the strut back in with the coil on it and jack up the knuckle and lower control arm uh, and uh, bolt in the top of the strut. Uh, let's try and do that, I guess. Uh, we'll start on the left rear because it's easiest to get a camera angle of that right now. All right. We gotta shove this back up in here without a spring compressor. <laughs> so, here it is. Here's the left rear. I'm actually pointing the camera at the wrong thing right now. The first thing we have to do is the top hat. Admire my wasp collection. One wasp and two wasps, each with a nest. Uh, don't own yellow cars. Anyway, the first thing we're gonna do is install this top hat into this thing. So the first thing I know we're going to need is the jack. We need to get the jack underneath this lower control arm and not the brake dust shield because uh, the brake dust shield is not going to take force very well. Take note on the spring that these are tight and this is loose. The loose winding goes at the bottom and the tight winding goes at the top. So grab your new strut. Notice that this lines up right here. Oh, I'm stupid. There's a very important thing that I did not do yet. Can't remember if these are the fronts or the rears, but I had to order these because the ones on my car were trash. Uh, these are the fronts, it looks like. Want to make sure that the spring ends up around the inside of the top mount. Basically, there's like a little metal ring, and you just want to make sure the spring is around that metal ring. You can easily feel it up there. Everything feels good so far. I can sort of still move the spring a little bit. It's not that tight, so try to center it on this while the force isn't too high. Well, yeah, that's another critical thing, I guess, huh? We actually have to get the top of the strut through the little hole. Take note that this side is completely flat. It's keyed. There's no thread right here. So the hole in this top hat has the same flat spot, so you have to line up this flat spot with the top hat in here in order to get it up through the hole. Part of me wishes I had powder coated these uh, shock bodies before I put the struts in, but it's not like the rest of the car is that pretty. I think that these are gonna look fine from like 10 feet away or 50 feet away or whatever, and that's how most people are gonna see them. 46 pound feet, so full soft. So I'll just do 180 for now and leave it at that. Oh yeah, Should probably torque that. Tight coil on top, loose coil on the bottom. Oh, that was a terrible idea. Why did I do that? Why does me hammer?
now that I got these two bolts in, I'm going to try and uh, maneuver this strut into the hole. Woo! Awesome. I'm just trying to pull it up through the hole here. There we go. We can put this collar on. Okay, so that's full soft. And now I'll set it 180. All right, let's put the brake hose and the sway bar end link back on. So let's lower this. Let me raise it back up so that I have some room back here to work with. Stick this nut on back here. You getting this camera guy? All right, so you grab your five mil Allen key and your 14 millimeter wrench. Nut on here. Stick the wrench on there. Stick your Allen key in. Your uh, sway bar end link is now installed. All right, so the last critical part here is this arm. So we gotta make sure this arm is in the right spot. So while the suspension is lowered, we're gonna make sure this is roughly over top of the coupling here. And then as we raise everything up, we're gonna just make sure this stays over top of this other part, approximately. In order to get this bolt in, Back here, obviously the holes have to be aligned. In order to get these holes aligned, we have to raise the suspension up to the point where they're supposed to be together. So I'm just gonna hold this back here, jack this up with the other hand. There we go. It just went right on. If you're trying to bang this in with a hammer, then you're, you're doing it wrong. So now that this bolt is in, you actually want to let it down and now that you let it down you can easily get like a impact or socket on the back where's me hammer there we go when i say i'm jacking up the lower control arm in the rear this is what i'm talking about so we have the this rear toe arm here and then connected right underneath the middle of the knuckle is this arm that goes back to the rear subframe like in the middle. This is what I'm talking about. If you try to jack up the other side, it's gonna twist the knuckle and it's gonna make it impossible to get this strut straight up in there. So make sure you put your jack right on this and jack this up. Don't jack up the dust cover for your brake dust. So that's going to just bend. So the rear is jacked up. My impact driver doesn't fit in there because it's so big. If you have like a really nice Milwaukee one that's not as long, then you won't have that problem. But those are super, super expensive. All right. Yeah, so the spring isn't fully like at, at its correct orientation. It should be twisted another like inch over here. So I have to actually remove the top nut and then twist the spring and put the top nut back on. Ugh. of my lower ball joints, they seem very cracked. I already looked online. It looks like you have to just buy a new lower control arm, which is really expensive, unless you get a knockoff lower control arm. So I'm, I guess I'll get like AutoZone lower control arms or something. So yeah, kind of a bummer. I'm gonna have to take this back apart here shortly to do the lower control arms. So another video will be coming up on that. All right, with that said, let's get this thing drivable again. I just realized this has also been hanging on this brake hose the entire time, which is really bad. So I'm putting the sway bar end link back on so that I can get rid of it being in my way. All right, so make sure your sway bar and your sway bar end link are out of the way. Get your strut pointed in approximately the right direction.
we got one bolt in, um, pretty much right under where the strut will go in, holding the top of the strut so I can feel where it's going to go. Still in the right spot. Now I'm going to move the knuckle to align with where I want the strut to be. Putting a little bit of pressure on the lower control arm so I can get the bottom of the strut away from the sway bar end link. There we go. So we're partially in the hole up top. All right, I'm gonna make sure if there's like a keying at the bottom. So underneath here is a keying. Basically there's like two slots in the side of the bolt. And then in the cap that holds the top of the spring, there's matching slots cut out. So I need to rotate that until it seats up in there. Easiest way to turn the shaft is to grab a 5 8 wrench like this and just stick it on the end and rotate it. Okay, I think I just don't understand how a front strut works. So there's some kind of bearing in here and when I go to torque this, it turns but it does eventually torque so maybe it's fine. So that would be this front strut completed. Oh wait, no it's not. I have to do like the brake hose and stuff. Okay, this is awesome. She's finally back on the ground. You can finally drive her again. At some point, I will be installing ADCO front sway bar because the ADCO front sway bar is an inch in diameter and the white line sway is only 22, I think, millimeters. It's about 0.86 inches or something like that. So it's, it's not as stiff as the ADCO front sway bar. And I'll also be getting some new front end links and I guess lower control arms. That'll be pretty much the end of the autocross build. I will get crash bolts for all four corners at some point, but I still am running a stock alignment. I actually have no idea how the alignment is on this thing because the shocks have been blown so it didn't really matter that much. Um, but now that is something I am going to have to care about. Other than that, the next thing I'm really looking forward to is doing my headlights. God, these headlights are so massive. Uh, yeah, I really need to clean these up. They even look better on camera than they do in real life, which is annoying. 
kind of like my paint, then make sure to sub and do all the engagement stuff because that, that helps out. Otherwise, I will just do stuff without posting videos because that's like a hundred times easier. All in all, this really wasn't that bad. If you have a workshop, I think this is really not that hard and you, sh you, know, you should have no problem doing this. If you're like me, you don't have a garage, you don't have any workspace with power, you don't have any benches to mount like a vise on, then this job is, it's a lot more annoying than if you did have all that stuff, but I did it without any of that, so you should be able to too if you're following along. I believe in you. Uh, good luck. Now it's time for my driving impression. Whoa, the handling is so good, you guys. Wow, these shocks are so great. Just kidding, I'm in my driveway because I have COVID. I haven't been to work for a little over a week. Um, barely left the house. The video you've been watching is probably like two months old. Since this video was filmed, I have replaced the front lower control arms. There's going to be a video on that soon. Um, I went on my honeymoon. There's going to be a video on that. I was supposed to go to practice three autocross to test out my shocks and everything. Um, and the next competition day, I missed one during my honeymoon. Um, but the next competition day I can go to, which is event three, um, is two weekends away. I wanted to review my shocks during a autocross day, but I won't be able to. I'm sorry it's boring, but they're a lot better. I, don't, I can't really get any good video because my wife is just as sick as I am. Um, and and I, I don't have any friends I can have come film because I'm sick and I don't want to get them sick. So uh, besides just waiting another month or whatever to release this video, um, I figured I would just film this outro. So the shops are great. They're better around town than blown shocks, and they're better in the twisties. Coney yellows are just a straight upgrade from blown OEM shocks. Not a surprise. Um, but there's like a little joint in the road over yonder um, that doesn't upset the car nearly as much now. My wife prefers the suspension currently. Uh, shocks are dampers, which if you take differential equations, you know that um, dampers just hate change. So the spring wants the car to be at a certain height, and the damper hates all change. The damper doesn't want the car to change height at all. So if you um, go full stiff, you're essentially going to slow the rate of change uh, of the car of its pitch. Forward, back, left, right. But because I have stock springs, uh, that rate of change, uh, the limit will be the same, right? So it's not going to stop my car from swaying in terms of, you know, I'm still going to have the same amount of body roll as before in a long sweeper, but maybe in a slalom, maybe the car won't roll so much. Um, but we'll see. We'll do uh, an autocross day, and then I'll, I'll talk about the shocks more later in the autocross day. So subscribe if you want to see that. You can ring the bell if you really want to. I actually haven't rung a single bell on any of my channels. Um, I I click on my subscriptions page and go through it manually. So if you don't want to ring the bell, sure. If you, if you don't want to like the video or subscribe, that's cool. Um, if you already stopped watching, 